So, um, hi everyone, I'm Ishil Dilik. I'm also from UT Austin, and I will be talking about our work on automatically synthesizing queries from natural language. But before I start, I do want to clarify that uh, most of the credit for this work goes to my students, namely Navid Yamazade and Yo Pangwang. Unfortunately, they were not able to make it here due to immigration issues. <laughs> okay, so as you can tell from the title, this talk is about a new methodology for automatically synthesizing queries from natural language descriptions. And we're interested in this problem because um, a lot of the time, users would like to query some data that's stored in a relational database, but they don't have the expertise to express these queries in some formal query language like SQL, so therefore we would like to provide tool support. So now before I explain how our technique actually works, let me uh, outline the key design goals that we had when we started on this project. So our first important goal is generality, meaning that we're interested in techniques that should work for any database, and they should do so without requiring uh, database-specific training or additional customization. So in other words, we want a technique that's somehow database agnostic. So second, we're interested in techniques that are fully automated, meaning that our approach should not require hand-holding from the user. And furthermore, we also don't want to require the user to know what the database schema looks like. Now, one important consequence of this design choice is that programming by example, like the one you heard uh, in the previous talk, is not a good fit for our setting because PB approaches would actually require the user to know something about uh, how the data is organized. And last but not least, of course, we're interested in techniques that are sufficiently accurate, meaning that the intended query should be ranked within the top K results and K should be a small value in practice, uh, hopefully one uh, the majority of the time. All right. So now the key idea that allowed us to realize these goals is to combine semantic parsing techniques that were developed in the NLP community with type-directed synthesis and automated repair. So specifically given the English description provided by the user, our method uses semantic parsing to parse the English description into a so-called query sketch. So basically, a query sketch just gives you the sh general shape of the query. It does not refer to any database elements like names of tables or attributes. So then once we generate a query sketch, we use quantitative type inhabitation to find all well-typed completions of the sketch, and we also assign a confidence score with each completion. Now, it turns out that there are many cases where we're not able to find a completion that meets a minimum confidence threshold. So in this scenario, our technique enters a refinement loop in which we alternate between type-directed synthesis and automated repair. So now I'm going to explain each of these components in a bit more detail, and I'll start with our intermediate representation, namely the query sketch. Okay, so as I just mentioned, a query sketch is a formal representation that specifies the shape of the query, but it does not refer to any database tables or attributes. So for instance, here's an example of a uh, very simple query sketch. And as you can see here, we've fixed the shape of the query to be of the form select from where. We've also determined that we're using this count aggregate function. And we've also fixed the where clause to be of the form some attribute equals the string oopsla2010. But also observe that there are a bunch of unknowns in this query sketch. So for example, these question marks refer to unknown attributes, and this refers to an unknown table in the database. And furthermore, also observe that the sketch has natural language hints that are associated with each hole, and the intention here is that whatever we fill this hole with, it should somehow have to the hint that's associated with it. So now one thing I do want to emphasize here is that this intermediate representation, namely the query sketch, is really important for our technique because it allows us to parse the English description into a formal representation without requiring any database-specific training. So this is a key component that allows our technique to be somehow database agnostic. All right, so now the way we generate these query sketches is through semantic parsing. And for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this term, semantic parsing is a technique from the NLP community that allows you to translate a natural language description 
into a so-called logical form. And basically a logical form is an unambiguous um, language that's specified using a context-free grammar. And in our case, we represent uh, logical forms in the form of query sketches. So more specifically, our semantic parser defines a set of reduction rules that describe how you can derive non-terminals in the CFG from token sequences in the English description. And in the general case, you know, we all know that natural language is highly ambiguous, so therefore there can be many query sketches that's associated with a, with a given English sentence. So the key idea here is to use machine learning to predict the most likely logical form from uh, the uh, given description. So therefore, in our setting, uh, the output of the semantic parser is not just a single query sketch, but we produce a rank list of query sketches where there is a probability that's associated with every sketch. Okay. So now, once we generate these sketches using semantic parsing, the next step uh, in our algorithm is to generate all possible well-typed completions of each sketch. And in our uh, method, we formulate the sketch completion problem in terms of quantitative type inhabitation, where the goal is to figure out all inhabitants of a type, and we also want to associate a score with each inhabitant. So more specifically, in this context, the type environment corresponds to the database schema. And we also use a set of domain-specific scoring heuristics that we use to assign scores to each inhabitant. And of course, since we're dealing with relational databases here, these scoring heuristics use database-specific clues like what's a primary key, what are the foreign keys, we look at the contents of the database, we look at the similarity between the natural language hints, the names of database elements, and so on. So in just a little bit more detail, uh, our type inhabitation rules are uh, basically correspond to rules of this shape. So basically, given some type environment gamma, we say that the sketch S instantiates to well-typed uh, query Q, and we also associate a confidence score with, uh, with, the actual, uh, with the actual query. And I won't talk about these um, you know, typing rules in any detail, but I just wanted to give you a very simple example just so you have some idea of what's going on. So here we have the simplest example of a query sketch. Namely, we just have a single um, unknown table that's has this hint h that's attached to it. So in this case, according to this rule, we can instantiate this whole with table t if t is in the domain of gamma, of course that t is a table in the database, and then when we assign the we look at the similarity between the natural language hint and the name of the database table. And the other rules get significantly more complicated, so I won't go into this. If you're interested, you can uh, find more details in the paper. Okay. So now once we uh, do this quantitative type inhabitation, if we can find a completion that meets our confidence threshold, that's great, then we're done. But it turns out that in many cases, you actually cannot find a completion that meets our confidence threshold. And this happens often because the user's assumptions may not accurately reflect how the data is organized in the database. So in this case, our method, as I said, enters this refinement loop where we use automated repair to come up with a modified version of the sketch. So in just a little bit more detail, uh, the goal of sketch repair is basically given a faulty sketch that doesn't have a high confidence completion, the goal is to generate a modified version of the sketch for which we can hopefully find a uh, high confidence completion. And similar to many other we decompose this problem into two steps. So in particular, we have a fault localization step where the goal is to identify a minimal faulty subpart of the sketch. And then once we do fault localization, we use a database of repair tactics that allow us to obtain the modified version of the sketch. And again, since we're dealing with uh, SQL queries here, our repair tactics include strategies like add a predicate, add a join operator, change the change an aggregate function into a column name or vice versa and so on. Okay, so to summarize, this is the overall workflow of our algorithm. So given the English description, we use semantic parsing to generate the top K most likely sketches. Then we alternate between type-directed synthesis and repair to figure out all the possible completions. And at the very end, 
we have this global ranking step where we rank each of the queries according to their confidence score and then we present the top end results to the user. So now before I um, tell you about our evaluation, I just wanted to walk you through uh, a simple example that illustrates how this technique actually works in practice. So suppose that we're working with a database that contains information about publications, conferences, and so on. And let's say specifically we're looking at uh, the Microsoft Academic Search Database. And the user wants to know the number of papers published in Uppsala 2010. So now given this query, we use semantic parsing to generate the query sketches. And in this case, it turns out that the sketch that we looked at earlier happens to be the one uh, that's the highest ranked. So now given this query sketch, our type-directed synthesis engine tries to fill each of these holes. But unfortunately, it turns out that none of the completions, even though they're well-typed, they will not meet our confidence threshold. So we reject the sketch and we try to repair it. And when we do a repair, so in particular when we do fault localization, it tells us that the likely culprit is the where clause. And the intuition here is that there is actually no database entry containing the string 2010. So therefore we consult our repair tactics and they tell, oh, you can add a predicate. So then as a result of repair, we generate this new sketch where the where clause now is a conjunction of two different predicates. So now in the second iteration, we again go back to type-directed synthesis and we try to fill each of them. But alas, it again turns out that there are no high confidence completions of the query of the sketch, so we again try to perform repair. And in this particular case, fault localization tells us that the likely culprit is the from clause. And the intuition here is that there is no single database table that contains both the entry Uppsala as well as the number 2010. And in this case, our repair tactics tell us we can possibly resolve this issue by introducing a join operator. So therefore, our new modified sketch becomes, uh, basically, we're selecting from not just a single table, but from the join of two different tables. So now, in the, uh, in the third and final iteration, when we go back to synthesis, we can actually find completions that meet our confidence threshold. And in this case, the query that's the highest strength is the one that you see over here. And it turns out that this is actually the right one. And if you run this query on the MAS database, it will give you uh, the answer that you want. All right. So now that's all the technical detail I have. So now I'm going to switch gears and tell you a little bit about how we evaluated this technique. So we evaluated uh, our approach since our goal is to be database agnostic, we looked at multiple different databases. So in particular, we looked at the MAS database that I alluded to in the previous example. We looked at the IMDB, the, uh, the movie database, as well as Yelp, which is the uh, business reviewing database. And for each of these databases, we collected a um, significant number of benchmarks, over 100 for each of them. And in particular, the queries for the MAS database come from uh, the Nullier data set. And Nullier is uh, a paper or a tool that addresses the same problem and that won uh, a best paper award in VLDB 2014. And for the IMDB and Yelp databases, we did not have any existing queries available. So therefore, we conducted a user study and we asked um, various people, oh, come up with queries that you would like to extract about movies, directors, actors, and you know, combinations of those and so on, for instance, uh, for the IMDB database. So in total, we have uh, 455 benchmarks. So we use SQLizer to translate the English description into an SQL query. And then we manually inspected the results and we determined whether the intended query was ranked within uh, top K for different values of K. So basically this table gives you a quick summary of our results. So first of all, if we define success to mean that the intended query was ranked within top five, then we see that our tool SQLizer achieves close to 90% accuracy uh, pretty much across all three databases. Now, of course, if you have a stricter definition of success, and uh, we define success to mean that the intended query was ranked within top three, then, you know, of course, accuracy drops, but it's still pretty good. It's around 86% on average. 
And if you look at top one, then our accuracy ranges between 81%, but this is still significantly better than um, our uh, closest competitor, namely Nalier. And the other thing I want to point out here is that uh, the synthesis time is actually quite reasonable. So in particular, Sequelizer takes an average of 1.2 seconds with 85% of the time being spent on semantic parsing. All right. So to conclude, uh, basically I talked about a database agnostic methodology for synthesizing database queries from natural language. And the key takeaway message from this talk is uh, this idea of combining semantic parsing with a refinement loop that, combi that combines type-directed synthesis and automated repair. And in this paper, we only apply this idea to synthesizing SQL queries, but we, leave, but we believe that the proposed methodology could also be applicable to other contexts where you want to do synthesis from natural language descriptions and you have some basic type information available. All right, that's all I have. I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>